So I decided to do a ringworm and cattle. Um, this, this picture is actually taken in uh, eastern Colorado, that's where I worked last summer. Um, they have a drier climate, which you know, ringworm is an issue they um, ran into every now and then, but not all the time, because they've been there doing it long enough, they know how to take care of it. Um, as far as the definition of ringworm, it's a transmissible infection, infectious skin disease caused most often by tryptophyton burkosum, which is a spore forming fungus. Um, it's also categorized as a dermophyte, and it's slow growing. Um, it's found in the soil. Um, as far as the cause, uh, tryptophyton burkosum or ringworm, it can stay in an area for years if it's not sanitized properly. Uh, which is why out west they have an issue. Um, young calves have a higher risk due to their weak immune system. Uh, I read somewhere it said uh, two to six months is really the, the uh, big, uh, big goal, I guess. And uh, their skin has a higher pH, which is also an issue for it. Um, you can spontaneously see ring or outbreak if you're moving cattle to an unfamiliar, unfamiliar location. Um, like let's say you just recently uh, bought a neighboring pasture and you don't know uh, what issues they've had it with it in the past. Um, that's something you want to talk to uh, the, the buyer about. Or if you use old equipment <coughs> such as halters, chutes, or fence panels that um, animals with ringworm have had or touched or rubbed up against because it's uh, easily um, contagious. As far as the transmission, uh, it's bad to have direct contact with ringworm. Uh, obviously, if you have other infected animals, um, all they have to do is rub, rub up against each other, and it really doesn't take much. Um, they can contract uh, ringworm. Because, like I said, infected equipment is a big deal. You want to be, be sure to sanitize everything. Um, and human contact on the infected area Humans can absolutely contract ringworm. So anytime you're uh, taking care of it, taking care of the issue, or or are around it at all, it's important to uh, wear gloves or just be cautious. The environmental effects of ringworm. So like I said, it's often found in dry climates. Um, uh, you, the issue really outstands if you have overcrowded or cramped facilities. Because obviously, if you have a lot of animals of small space, they're going to have to rub, rub off of each other, which uh, just makes it even worse. Um, it doesn't matter where at on the animal; it can it can happen anywhere on the animal, really. Um, and they have a high risk of ringworm, especially during winter months, because that's when you have uh, diseases or your uh, your system is really is much lower. Uh, be sure to keep areas. If they're going to spend most of the time in a barn, you want to keep it really clean. You can bed it down well. Um, not just this, but you can have foot rot or anything. Um, that's just a common sanitized practice. And if you're going to treat ringworm, there's a few ways to do it. Um, so out west, it's hard to treat ringworm. So it'll actually usually heal itself come nine months. But let's say, yeah, you heal it up here on its eye. But if it, let's say, it itches its back or something, and then all of a sudden you got ringworm that's starting on the back end of the animal, and that's going to take another nine months. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, you want to take care of it if you can, and obviously as soon as you can, otherwise, next thing you know, you got a whole herd full of ringworm. Um, if you are going to take mm -hmm. care of it, you can get a hold of the animal. Uh, application of medicine directly on the lesion. The med medicine used is actually called thiabendazole paste. It's also known as Whitfield's ointment. Uh, I believe I read somewhere it is the same type of medicine people use for athlete's foot. Mm -hmm. um, you would treat it twice, three days apart, and then obviously sanitize the area that you were holding the animal. Um, it's possible to use a wire brush to remove the crested area, and then you follow that by iodine. That sounds crude. Wire brush. <laughs> yeah. <but laughs> yeah, I know when you deal with cattle, that's what you do. Yeah, they're a lot tougher than yeah. hot animals. There's a hot, a lot of thick hide there. Um, and lesions, once you have those finally removed, 
Uh, you should collect them or put them in the same area, and you should even burn them to prevent contamination of other areas. Because just you got to always be watching, following your steps. Um, anything you do with them, they're obviously uh, can be contracted other places. So don't make sure the dogs and cats and stuff aren't around because they can contract it too. And uh, prevention. So how do you just completely steer clear of the issue so you don't have to worry about bringing over at all? Um, well, like I said, overcrowdedness is an issue. So you want to reduce the amount of animals in the specific area. Um, if, you, if you have a decent, if you have a large barn, you can just know how many animals is safe to put in there. Um, if you, if you have that issue, I would say as soon as you see one animal outbreak, um, if you can contain it contain it in a separate pen, um, or just start letting let less animals out, put them in pasture. Um, some countries believe in vaccinations. Uh, the U.S. does not, I don't think. That's <laughs> what I read. And if, if you're taking care of, well, if you're taking care of the issue, obviously wear gloves so that you don't get it. Cattle don't like ringworms, so people probably won't either. And keep the area clean where animals often uh, lay down. I like the uh, the guy spraying the floor. Notice how it's uh, grooved for footing purposes, cross grooved like that. Yes, absolutely. Um, I think that's all I got. Okay, and there's your sources. Yeah. Have you ever had ringworm? Me myself, no. I've okay. dealt with animals with ringworm. Yeah, but. I got <laughs> I got it from a cow. I was bleeding a lot of cattle from the jugular vein. It was very rainy, and the, I'll never forget the water was running down off their head and onto me, and oh, I man. got some on the arm. I just couldn't avoid it, so yeah, it was interesting. It took me a while to get rid of it, too. <laughs> and <laughs> the lesions, it's amazing on some cows how big those get. I mean... Yeah, I, I saw some pictures that were just hard to look at, honestly. Oh, yeah, because it was like, wow. I mean, because they, they react a little differently. For humans, it's mm -hmm. basically almost like a ring on your skin, whereas cattle, they get those big bumps and like you say, you can take it off with a wire brush. So yeah, it's amazing.